Howdy folks, how we going? Welcome to the brewery. Uh, and today I'm tasting the 2023 Loaded Dog Lager. Two versions there of in front. Let's give these glasses a bit of a frost off. That's better. We'll snap a quick photo for Facebook land. Ah, fridge has gone off just just the right time. Lovely. Anyway, it said Loaded Dog Lager 2023. Uh, let's call it a month in the keg, 24th of October. She finished fermenting and was put into the kegs. Uh, I think by memory the kegs went into the keg fridge within like two or three days. It was only, it was very soon thereafter. Um, they went in gassed and carbonated from the, from the ferment. Uh, and been going since then. I've had a couple of tasters along the way. Um, I was planning on letting this sit for six weeks before I did a taster, but um, I think they've come along nice enough at the moment we can get onto it. And I'm at home, uh, <laughs> off work. Um, the fella I work with has got COVID. Um, I, I'm fairly confident I've got COVID, but the test keeps saying, telling me no. But either way, um, I'm at home uh, for a couple of days. So, um, might, as well get, might as well get this fella done. So, original gravity on this fella was... Let me try for me, here we go. Okay, original gravity was 10... 10.43 pitched one packet of S189 onto around 8 9 litres in one fermenter which is this fella um, she's she's nice and clear not quite as clear as this fella um, but uh, still nothing Still nothing wrong with that clarity. Pitched uh, Lel Brew Diamond on the second half. Same thing, one pack dry. Um, worth it. so about, about one and a half grams a litre. But that is, um, that diamond is, it's great, it's, it, it is much clearer than the S189. Um, that is, Oof, that's pretty much crystal clear. Very nice though. Um, certainly not complaining about the look of either. Nice carbonation. Um, ferment was 11 degrees uh, for the first four days. Now, uh, I was going to... I was trying to control the, the pressure. It didn't sort of really happen. So, um, after two days... Uh, come up to mid, the mid-teens um, after two days. I was planning on doing it for 4, four PSI and then 12 and 16 and bringing it up slowly. But anyway, uh, so for all intents and purposes, we've done a nice um, under under pressure ferment on, on this brew, even though I wasn't, uh, wasn't what I was intending to do. But anyway, so 11 degrees for four days. Uh, raise it to 13 degrees for another four uh, up to 17 for another three days uh, and then cold cracks it down to two for six days um, so total ferment was 8, 11, 17 days two and a, two and a half weeks uh, finished off at 10, 12 and I'm pretty sure both were 10, 12 yeah, both finished up the same um, so they were around I've got 4.3 on the board but I've got a feeling I've bloody muffed that it's not actually 4.3 43 is 31 
Yeah, it's more like 4.1, maybe 4.2. So it's a little lighter than I would normally um, run the loaded dog. I normally run it sort of more 4.4, 4.5, but anyway, that's all good. We went back to the Pride of Ringwood this year um, after Super Pride last year, um, which I wasn't happy with. I said, you know, it flowed onto the Great Northern um, recipe development. Uh, so this year I've gone back to the Pride of Ringwood. Um, so I'll link up the original Brood over here and go back and have a look. But uh, I, had ch I changed the malts around. Uh, I normally do Carahill as a sole. Uh, specialty malt. I didn't have enough to do it so I went for some caramel malt and some carapils uh, basically to a similar percentage level um, hoping to get up around the same sort of range with the malt but we didn't it's not quite as the colour's not actually not too far from what it would normally be um, and a little bit of dextrose use the Voyager under modified Pilsner malt first time I've um, I've used it, so that was reflected in the mashing profile. But anyway, <laughs> you can go back and have a look at that in the Brewday video. Let's have a let's have a go at her. Okay, it's a quite a light. Um, I want to. The first word that came to mind there was pillowy. Pillowy sort, pillowy sort of a nose. Um, it hasn't got. Hasn't got any real bready, malty, grainy type nose, which is normally what you get. Um, not a massive amount, but you normally get a little bit with the loaded dog. You know, some of that little sweet malt. But it's not quite as noticeable as it normally would be and there's certainly not as much hop on the nose anyway um let's see it's nice and clear s189 um yeah and again neither of these yeast are my preferred preferred yeast i prefer a dutch um type of yeast for the loaded dog and i've always found that like my preferred versions have always used yeah copenhagen now the Copenhagen Lager, which I think is uh, White Labs, I think, or the White Y East um, Dutch Lager. Uh, yeah, we went with what I had this year in the fridge. So anyway, cheers. Let's have a taste of this. Mm. Straight off, it's just. It's crisp, clean. First mouthful is crisp and clean. Um, crispness from the crispness from the malt. Um, then a little bit of caramel sweetness comes through, uh, and the hops sort of come with that. It's just light and fresh up front. The caramel comes on sort of mid to late in the in the palate, um, and it's honestly it's a little bit sweeter um, than I would really like it to be. Uh, and again, that's like that's like that caramel, the caramel malt as opposed to caramel. Um, it, it tends on more the sweeter caramelly side than it does on the dry biscuity side of the caramel, which is why I like the caramel. So it does give that sort of dry, biscuity sort of a sort of a vibe, but it's drinking it's drinking quite nicely. The bitterness, um, whilst being there, is not as noticeable as it certainly could be. And again, I think because there's that caramel note sort of keeping it from being quite as noticeable as it could be. But anyway, it's nice. I'm. Um, onto this fella, the, the, the diamond. That's a considerably, considerably <laughs> brighter. Yeah, the nose is 
Yeah, fairly similar. Okay, that's not not quite as crisp in that very first in that first instance. It's a little a little rounder, a little um, yeah, a little smoother on the, on the on the front palate. With that smoothness, that caramel sweetness sort of. It's sort of almost there from the very, very first, you know, start of the mouthful, um, and it doesn't build. Where with that, it's sort of not there initially, and it, and it, and it comes in. Uh, here, it's sort of there the whole way through, and doesn't really get any any more noticeable. It's more prominent straight away. Still drinking, yeah, still drinking very nice. Uh, again, yeah, that bitterness is not quite. Yeah, where I'd really like it. But there's plenty there. You know, there's nice, nice level of bitterness. Um, I'm getting you know, the tail ends of the earthiness from the Prada Ringwood, but that little bit of sweetness is really keeping that initial dirty spicy note um, keeping it a little bit restrained which plenty of people yeah, are going to really like uh, particularly people who aren't massive fans of Pride of Ringwood um, I like Pride of Ringwood I like that dirty earthy note um, that's what I'm looking for I mean, it's not something I want in every beer I drink but in this in a, in an Aussie style lager I'm happy to have some of that earthy dirtiness um, and that spicy you know little bit of bitey um, peppery note that's almost reminiscent of um, you know a good SARS dose um, and that's got that sort of it does have that sort of SARSy sort of vibe in the back end without having the grassy front end of you have know, to get your SARS or you know, some of your more your noble hops. But, yeah, that's drinking that's really nice. I definitely uh, would not be going again with, a car with that caramel, but, um, simply, and again, simply because it's not where I want the beer. It's not that it's done anything, you know, overly negative. It's, it's, it's adding that little bit of sweetness, uh, which for me tends to push the beer into more of a European sort of a feel. Um, Aussie lager should be a little bit drier, um, not massive. I don't want this massively dry, but it shouldn't be pushing too sweet. Um, and that caramel is sort of pushing that way uh, and I was a bit concerned about that and you, yeah, you watch the Brew Day video I talk about yeah, trying to offset some of that sweetness with the hop additions and, yeah, and the mashing process uh, knowing that was potentially going to happen um, I generally avoid caramel as, as a single malt um, in most brews for that reason because it is very, it is very sweet or, or can come across, can be perceived very sweet. Um, in particular, you know, this sort of thing, where you've got nothing really seeing against it. The, the other thing was that um, that under-modified Pilsner, that Voyager malt, uh, that base, I wasn't really sure how that was going to stack up and what sort of profile that was going to give us, having not used it before, um, and not really being sure how much depth we're going to miss from that that malt being under modified um i think it's actually done it's done really well and i'm pretty confident that it's only the caramel 
bringing that sweetness. I think that under modified malt actually um, probably works quite well. Uh, could have gone a little bit. Probably could have gone for a longer mash and possibly even a longer boil time uh, to try and bring up some more character out of it. But I really think had this had the right malt base, um, that right specialty, that caramel, you know, sitting there with that little bready, dry finish, I think this would have been really, really right right in that mark of where I want you know, the loaded dog to sit. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good beer. There's a reason. <laughs> There's a reason why this gets smashed whenever people come over. It's always the first beer that gets demolished uh, when yeah family when family come over uh, because it is yeah it's commercial like whilst having certainly enough character and enough interest that it's not a dead boring commercial lager. Uh, it's that beer that doesn't doesn't offend non-craft drinkers but also does enough to say yeah hey, home brew and beer in general doesn't have to be dull and boring like yeah those other very popular beers um, <laughs> that we're all so familiar with <laughs> let's just leave their names out of the fucking conversation uh, but yeah the S89, the, the 189s work nicely. Uh, the, the, the diamonds work nicely. Uh, and it's interesting that that comparison of being crisp and, yeah, almost snappy to being, yeah, round and smooth. Uh, so, and I'm finding that a lot with the diamond. And I think, as a result, a lot of people are, in, are liking the diamond uh, for that very reason, because it is smooth um, and it is clean and it's soft. Yeah, so if you're coming from a world of, you know, it's fucking same, Great Northern, and yeah, that sort of thing, pub, commercial mega school where the bitterness is incredibly low, um, they are smooth, soft, your diamond's getting you closer to that. If you like your real traditional, snappy, clean, fresh lager the s189 certainly works so but anyway that's her loaded dog lager 2023 um little john's signature beer uh i said i've brewed this every year now for It could even be the 10th year. It could have been 2013, the first year I actually brewed it. Um, I'd, have to go, I'd have to go back and look at the records. As I said, this, this is the beer that's, yeah, it's taken out first in the uh, state comp um, and in the nationals um, within the Australian lager category. And a lager, which, a, 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 category that no longer exists um yeah but it, it, it's, it's a good beer go back and look at it, the any of any of the previous um recipes they're all uh, they're all decent <laughs> they're all you know, up there with anything any other lager you're gonna brew but anyway that's it any comments any questions stick them down the bottom Little John's Patreons, as always, guys, thank you very much for your support. There's a link down the bottom to Patreon. Jump in there if you want to have a look. A couple of bucks a month uh, helps the channel, lets me play around, do experiments and whatnot. Um, and it gives you a little warm feeling that you're helping out. <laughs> if you subscribe to the channel, thank you. If you aren't, hit the subscribe button down the bottom there. Ring the bell. Get notified when there's any new videos come up. Um, and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up down the bottom there. But for now, that's me, Little John. I'm out of here. Suck on some loaded dog.
So, until I see you again, when we brew on beer, drinking beer or talking beer, good brewing.